All right, what's going on guys? It's Epoxy and we have received a load of Cyberpunk 2077 info over the last week, including new characters, new gameplay details, a look into the upgrades to the Red Engine and more. But before we dive into all that, I wanted to let you all know that Mad Queen Show is hosting an awesome Cyberpunk 2077 related giveaway contest for a chance to win a Cyberpunk 2077 limited edition Xbox One X. So if you wanna know how to participate, I've linked her video for the giveaway in the description. With that said, let's roll the intro. Now, there is something I would like to address before we dive into the Cyberpunk 2077 info for this video, that being the large discussion revolving around Cyberpunk 2077 review copies rolling out, which, as you may know, could unfortunately result in leaks by people breaching the trust of CD Projekt Red. Pre-launch leaks often consist of unannounced gameplay details, leaked screenshots, leaked gameplay, and even full-blown story spoilers. So I want to make it very clear that I will not be covering any leaks that may occur from early review copies here on the channel. So to clarify, you will not have the game spoiled from leaks on my channel. I myself cannot stand these sorts of leaks as they're huge spoilers for things meant as a surprise. I also just find it disrespectful to the many people that work on this game, so there will be no leaks here on this channel. Now, I did bring this up on Twitter a few days ago, but most of you don't follow me there, so you probably should. And for those of you that missed it, Night City Wire Episode 5 was confirmed at the end of Night City Wire Episode 4, and Marcin Mamat, Global Community Lead at CD Projekt Red, recently teased us all with the following tweet. Just finished watching the latest version of the Cyberpunk gameplay trailer that's currently in the works. Mind blown. And while I think it was pretty obvious we were going to get some gameplay at the next event, it's just nice that we got a confirmation that there will be yet another gameplay trailer for all of us to watch together and for me to do an in-depth analysis on. But I would argue that the most exciting news we've gotten over the last week has been on some of the newly revealed characters in the game as Brian Deckert, well known as Connor from Detroit Become Human, and his wife Amelia Rose Blair, who's also an actor herself, are playing two unique roles in the game. Amelia is the female NPC seen in this screenshot, while Brian, on the other hand, is voicing the literal vending machine. That just lets you know this will surely be associated with a very goofy side mission in the game, or maybe they'll somehow have a dark twist on it. We'll just have to wait and see. Next up, we've got Ozop, the red-haired and red-eyed albino mercenary clown with a red grenade for a nose has been confirmed as a character in the game. He's seen holding the Nakota rifle in this screenshot and looks very unique from the many characters we've seen already. And of course, his name backwards is Bozo, which could be teasing the return of the Bozos gang in Cyberpunk 2077. As for the origin of Ozob, the character is extremely popular with the Brazilian community, which was reportedly a decisive factor for CD Projekt Red to include Ozob in the first place, as he is the character of Dave Azagal Pazos, co-founder of the Brazilian geek blog Jovem Nerd in the 90s. He will indeed be voicing his character in the Portuguese version of the game, which we even got a little bit of a behind the scenes for. Todo mundo vai morrer. No meu caso, eu vou levar um bando de filha da puta comigo. E teu nome é vem de vingança? A vingança, meu irmão, nunca é plena. Mata a alma e envenena e ela vai te explodir por dentro. There is a full-blown article on the character as well as a video telling the whole story of how Ozob ended up in the game. So all of that will be linked in the description as always. Now, there is also another potential tease by a well-known streamer. You might just know his name, that being Dr. Disrespect. As he quote tweeted the latest What You're Looking For trailer with Keanu Reeves saying, just wait until you see what we have planned next level. We've seen a number of personalities featured as side NPCs in the game, such as Jesse Cox and Alana Pierce, so this might be a tease of a Dr. Disrespect NPC or cameo of some sorts on, say, a radio station. It could also just be him hyping up future streams on the game, but the tweet does seem to imply that it might be more than that, so only time will tell. And while we're on the topic of streamers, we've also got some good news for streamers and content creators that are worried about copyright issues with the music in the game, as the side Cyberpunk Twitter had this to say in response to Dan's Gaming on Twitter. We'll share more details in the near future. What's good though, our soundtrack has been created from the scratch. This includes all tracks from the numerous artists we work with. Their music has been made specifically for our game, making this a bit smoother hopefully. 
Now, that doesn't necessarily mean all artists will be on board, so I do hope that this is ironed out ahead of launch, especially with the rising copyright and DMCA issues hitting both Twitch and YouTube. They also answered a question that many have had for quite some time, with the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account responding to people suggesting that trunk storage would be cool in the game, and this is what they revealed. And that's why we have it. It works with cars in your possession, the ones you can call. To clarify, cars in your possession can be used to store items, so they work as item storage. We've gotten a tease of this before in the Tools of Destruction trailer, which is when this question started ramping up in the first place, and it showed a number of weapons in the trunk of the car. So yes, vehicle trunk storage is finally confirmed. In fact, senior level designer Miles Tost, also known as the one who offered me max pairs for free, had this to add. I will be so audacious and step in with some cold hard dev knowledge. The answer to your question is yes, they are connected. Your apartment storage and the trunks of your cars act as one storage. It is very handy. Just don't ask me how it works. It works. So the storage system in Cyberpunk 2077 will work just like the stashes that were added in The Witcher 3, which I'm personally very happy about. Let's just say it will be very helpful with loot whores such as myself. Now, we also got an announcement that Cyberpunk 2077 language support on consoles depends on the region. So this is very important information if you're a console player and you want to play the game with a specific language. Basically, what this means is that there will only be certain languages for voiceover and text available on certain copies, depending on your region. So for those of you that are concerned, let's go ahead and run through the breakdown given by CD Projekt Red for both the physical and digital download versions of the game on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. As remember, there will not be a full next-gen version release at launch. So I'll display the PlayStation box codes and include the countries for each listed region on screen for all these, but the focus here is on the supported languages for each region, starting with the Americas. For voiceover, it supports English, Brazilian Portuguese, and French. And for text, it supports English, Brazilian Portuguese, Latin American Spanish, French, and Polish. Second is for Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. So for voiceover, it supports English, Russian, and Polish. And for text, it supports Russian, Czech, Hungarian, English, Polish, Arabic, and Turkish. Third is for Europe, Oceania, and South Korea. So for voiceover, it supports English, French, Italian, German, and Spanish. And for text, it supports English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Polish, and Korean. Next up is Japan, which for both voice and text, it only supports English and Japanese. And last is for Asia. So for voiceover, it supports English and Chinese. And for text, it supports English, traditional Chinese, simplified Chinese, and Thai. CD Projekt Red also wants to stress that you should always make sure with the retailer which region the game is from, as some shops may have non-local versions in their offer. Digital downloads are attached to the PlayStation Store or Microsoft Store region where they were purchased, and changing the store's region after purchase will not affect language availability. And of course, the PlayStation box code can be found on the spine of the game's case, as expected with all games. And the very last note is that the Korean voiceover details are said to be coming soon. The final thing for today is the exclusive interview in the latest issue of PC Gamer, with Jackie on the cover, in which CD Projekt Red spilled the beans on how the studio's Red Engine is helping create its biggest game to date. All of this information is thanks to a summary from Jack Jick on Twitter, who summarized the PC Gamer interview and shared some screenshots of vital information. So with that said, huge thanks to Jack Jick on Twitter for sharing the summary. First up, Red Engine. Red Engine has undergone an overhaul due to the massive scale and requirements of the huge, dense, and dynamic megacity. In quotes, there were so many things in Cyberpunk 2077 that we just didn't have to do for the Witcher games. There's also a brand new lighting pipeline. Upgrades to volumetric clouds and fogs bring new opportunities for that lighting system and a multitude of ray trace effects to shine, implementing simulation-based dynamics for liquids and clothing. And that's just which is evident on the surface. Implemented multi-layered shaders, so a leap in effective textile density on screen that translates to crisp, detailed environments, a new async compute pipeline to better make use of brand new graphics hardware built for DX12. 
the new API of choice for Cyberpunk 2077. Lastly, there's a system for procedural asset generation, allowing for attention to detail on an unprecedented scale. In quotes, essentially, we made the engine highly customizable, said Christoph Christian. We also got a screenshot of the section that shared Cyberpunk 2077's top three shiniest features. Number one being layered fashion, a new dynamic clothing system allowing you to layer up in every which way you think best without tearing textures. Even a bulletproof vest over a fluffy winter coat. Work it. Number two is car destruction. Using an approach based on structural analysis simulation, every vehicle type in Cyberpunk 2077 will fall to bits in a unique way. Your idiotic crashes will look incredible. And number three is the proxy system, delivering scaled back in-game models for use at a distance from the player camera. This clever system means your PC doesn't have to sweat the small stuff from miles away. Now moving on to real-time ray tracing. Diffuse illumination, reflections, ambient occlusion, and shadows will all be improved upon or enabled with real-time ray tracing. Ray tracing brought simplicity to the table when it came to testing and iterating. In quotes, Cyberpunk 2077 is an extremely complex game, both in terms of scale and also due to the design of Night City itself. We have an extremely vast cityscape with a huge amount of verticality. These factors make lighting Night City extremely demanding as we cannot use any pre-baked lighting systems, which are solutions so commonly used in games. We implemented ray tracing into our engine to work as a hybrid solution, meaning that we can replace certain systems with its ray traced version. For example, our core global illumination system uses light that comes from the sky, sun, and all location light sources to dynamically produce bounced light. In ray tracing mode, we use our main G1 to produce only the bounced lights, while the main light that comes from the sky is ray traced, giving it much better shaping and details in the shadows. And last, we take a look at lip sync for the game, which has been a hot topic over the last week, and it's for good reason. Cyberpunk 2077 uses a technology called JALI, which stands for Jaw and Lip Integration, which is capable of complete automation of lip syncing and facial animation that offers devs complete control to fine tune the end result. But the results from the tool alone are very impressive. In quotes, doing facial motion capture for every NPC in the game is impossible. You have to remember that we're talking about recording massive amounts of lines with numerous actors across different localizations, cooperating with studios all over the world for sessions, and doing voiceover pickups all the way until the very last moment sometimes. Using Jolly, we're able to successfully overcome many difficulties, for example, logistical ones, that this undertaking would otherwise pose with regular facial motion capture. And the co-founder of Jolly had a very true but sad statement to share, that being that, in quotes, bad lip sync gets noticed, and the great lip sync gets ignored. That hidden language of emotion underlying all the captivating facial animation will not be hindered by language barriers or time-constrained localizations in Cyberpunk 2077. Thanks to Jolly, Cyberpunk 2077 will offer linguistically and regionally accurate facial animation for 10, now 11, languages. That being Japanese, Russian, French, Mandarin, German, Polish, Brazilian Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, and English. And like I had suggested, it was recently re-announced that the Korean voiceover and lip-sync support is also coming post-launch, set to be a free update in December. The Jolly Research YouTube channel has also dropped a video breaking down Cyberpunk 2077's usage of Jolly in the game, which was a 19-minute long demonstration and explanation. Some of the most noteworthy things is that it demoed the benchmark for Judy, Dex, and Placid, which is the final render from Jolly. So here's what that looks like. With the kickoff of with Judy, she's a more of a calm speaker. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. Next is Dex, who is a little bit more energetic and mysterious. Apparently, first thing to burst are the eyeballs. Get a nice clear pop, then the rest goes goulash. And finally is Placid, who has a vibe of a dangerous cyberpunk hacker. Ten net watch scum dead. The greed, BBS is destroyed. But you walk, you breed. How? We also got a look at the anatomy of a performance, which gave us a compounding look of the different layers added through Jolly, which results in the final benchmark of Judy. And here's the look at that. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. Slow, deep breaths. 
Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. So once again, none of these are handmade and are generated using Jolly technology. All of them are fully procedurally generated animations without a single touch from an animator. And I have to say it looks really good. So for an example, here's what that Jolly benchmark of Judy looks like in game. Here's Judy. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. As you could probably tell, the lip sync looks on point. It's what you'd expect from a high quality lip sync by hand, but it's all done using Jolly, which not only means high quality and consistent lip sync throughout the entire game, but it's also what makes the amount of dialogue in the game even possible. Thanks to Jolly, this also means many supported languages for voiceover and lip sync. And to demonstrate that, here is the clip of the slow deep breath benchmark of Judy, but in the 10 different languages. Slow deep breaths. Doucement. Respire à fond. Tief durchatmen. Respire con calma. Mama shen hu si. Oddecha i guemboko. Deshi glubje. Respire lento e profondo. Respira lento e profondo. So this is some very exciting technology being used for the game, which I truly hope sees use in some other AAA games in the future, as it opens up a new realm of possibilities and language support. There is a load of super in-depth info on how this tool works, the flexibility of it, and how they went about utilizing it in Cyberpunk 20. 2077. So if behind the scenes stuff like this interests you, I really suggest giving it a watch. And I would personally say it was 100% worth it. But that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe to the fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to save in all of my future videos. It'd be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy signing off.